having looked at the components of a balanced diet and what constitutes a balanced diet, we can start to look at the different food groups that might make that up. And we did say in a previous tutorial, depending on what you've seen so far, that carbohydrates need to be balanced with proteins and fats. Now, with that in mind, folks, what I want to introduce you to, first of all, is two very basic statements. Carbohydrates are a source of energy. More specifically, they are the preferred source of energy for all cells. So ideally, our cells are to be powered, fueled, and the active energy within activation energy within those cells is going to be fueled by the breakdown of carbohydrates. Ultimately, in the form of glucose, which we'll come back to in a few moments' time. So with that in mind... Let's have a look at what carbohydrates are. You see here we've got our potatoes, our pasta, our rice, our cereals, our bread, our fruit, our vegetables in some cases, our grain. These are carbohydrate examples. And I just want to make it crystal clear that we have two types of carbohydrate. We have two types. The first type is what we would refer to as starches. And I'm going to look at these in quite a bit of detail in a moment, but it's what we would refer to as starches. Now, with starches, we are talking about your potatoes. We're talking about pasta. We're talking about bread. We're talking about rice. These are long-chain, relatively slow-release food structures in the form of carbohydrates. The other example is what we would call sugars. Now, sugars come in the form of fruit. For example, we have both sugars and starches in, in bananas, but we get sugars from fruit. We get it from milk. We get sugars from things like vegetables or, well, all vegetables actually, from vegetables. So just bear in mind that we can differentiate between starch and sugars and we're gonna do that in a few moments time. Before we do that, however, I just wanna look at the actual component or the component of the diet that should be made up of carbohydrates. If I draw a sort of a perfect circle to allow us to do a pie chart here, let me get rid of that. What we can do is we can give an estimation. If we're thinking about all energy, that's all the killer calories that we are going to consume as part of our diet, how much of that should be made up of carbohydrate? Now what we're going to recommend, well what I'm going to recommend to you here is that your carbohydrate based energy intake should be in the region of 60 to 65 percent total intake so in your diet what would be typical would be to take on board 60 to 65 percent of your energy from carbohydrates from things like pulses from things like rice from things like potatoes this would be a standard figure now that is not to say that everyone should do that and there's many diets that don't have it have so much carbohydrate in them for example but this would be considered a standard typical normal diet now i'm not going to go into what these other energy sources are right now. I'm sure you can probably realize what they're going to be. I've mentioned in uh, the balanced diet tutorial that we're looking for the right balance of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, but maybe you could be considering which would be the next biggest, for example. Now, what I want to do next is I want to take this notion of a starch, this notion of a sugar, and just take it a little bit further with you. While it might not look very exciting what I've got on the screen there, folks, this is a sugar. So I just want to say that this here is a sugar. We'd actually call it a monosaccharide, a single sugar. This here is a sugar. Okay, so if we are thinking about something like glucose, we could represent it something along the lines of this. But the point I want to make to you here is that if we were to copy that sugar and we were to repeat it like this, like this, like this, we are now building up what we would call a starch. Now, it is starches that we tend to find in things like potatoes, we tend to find in things like pasta, etc., etc., etc. but they are made up of chains of sugar. So I just wanna be crystal clear here. One of these blocks is a sugar, multiple of these blocks chained together is a starch. Now, during digestion, our job is to take starches which are insoluble, they can't be di they can't be put into the bloodstream, and we want to break them down to sugar. So what we find is that the role of digestion, let me choose a different color, the role of digestion, let me just find this here, the role of digestion is to break down our starches and what we aim to produce, what we aim to produce, if I just put one down here, is one of these, is one of the, meant to be the same size as the one above, but notice these are no longer linked together as they are above. What we've got here is we've got a starch that has been digested, broken down, and we now have simple sugars. And it is these sugars which will be absorbed into the blood and delivered to your cell. So the role of digestion in the mouth, 
uh, the breakdown of the stomach, the absorption of these sugars in the small intestine. The role of this is to break starches down into simple sugars, which can then be passed into the blood and delivered to the different cells of the body. So a couple of points I want to finish off with. First of all, what we're saying here is, what we're saying here is that our sugars are absorbed, absorbed in the small intestine. So the small intestine, which I'm not going to sort of reteach here because we've got whole courses on this, of course, elsewhere, but these sugars are actually taken into the bloodstream in the small intestine. The small intestine is a remarkable structure, sort of finger-like, uh, finger-like cells with really large surface area, and that glucose, that glucose goes on to do one of two things. That glucose is used to release energy. So that's one thing that it can be done that, that, that can happen with it. Or the second thing it can do is it can be stored and it can be stored in the body as glycogen. Now glycogen might be a new word for you. Don't worry about this sort of technical nature of it. Basically what we're saying is that if we can't use our if we're not using our glucose there and then, we can store it and we store it in places like the muscle and the liver. But there's a problem with this. This is only a two hour store. Okay, so we've only got two hours, we can only store two hours worth of glycogen. So what happens there is if we eat too much carbohydrate, we convert to fat. So if you take on too much carbohydrate, we convert it to fat and we store it. So a couple of things that might now relate to your kind of P lesson, your PE experience. First things first, are you eating sufficient or too much carbohydrate in your diet? That's a really good question. Depending on your answer that, it might give you uh, answers as to whether you feel energetic or whether you feel lethargic. Lethargic kind of means tired and slow. Do you tend to feel one of those things? If you're feeling energetic, it would suggest you're getting the right balance of carbohydrates, for example. If you're feeling lethargic and slow and heavy, it might be that you're not consuming enough or that you're consuming too much and you're having to spend energy converting that carbohydrate into fat. The other thing we want to stress here is that eating the right amount of carbohydrate is important. And also consider that glycogen, once we've exercised, let's say we play in a netball match for argument's sake, or we do an hour's hockey in our PE lesson, our glycogen store is going to decrease because we're going to utilize the glycogen that's been stored. So what we then have to do is we have to replace that glycogen, and we do that by eating carbohydrate. So really important that you guys have a good understanding of carbohydrate, what it does, what it's for, how to utilize it, and how not to make errors in the diet to either consume too much, too little, or, con or consume so much that we convert it into fat. Thank you.